Hello everyone, in this session I'm going to show you the process of going from a 3D block in to a 2D render. And we're going to start with just looking at the reference images. It's going to be really important to at least have your theme in mind first before you start to design your scene. So start to collect those reference images. I'm going to go over what kind of references you might want to look at. And then we'll jump into Photoshop, do our quick sketch from our reference. And then from that sketch, into Autodesk Maya to create our 3D blocking and we'll create a small scene for now for this demonstration and then we'll render that in a toon shader and then in further sessions we'll draw over that in more detail and begin to digitally paint on top. Okay so let's jump into the reference images and in this case I'm looking at reference for an abandoned interior. So in this case, it's a restaurant and I wanted it to be a kind of post-apocalyptic scene of an interior of a restaurant. So I'm looking at uh, restaurant references um, and it doesn't matter whether it looks brand new or it looks old. At this stage, we're just looking at the assets. We're looking at the props. So what assets are actually in a restaurant or within a coffee shop? OK, so. Try and gather as many references as possible. Don't dismiss the references at this stage. If you find it interesting or you think you might need some of these props within your scene, then save it out, put it into a folder, have subcategories within those folders to make it easy to find and save all of those reference images. Even if you don't use them, you may use them for another project. So make sure you are saving these images. And then in this case, I found some reference uh, on Flickr, free to use images. And uh, these are more kind of abandoned and all the boards are ripped out. Uh, so that's a really nice reference there. So what do I look for in my reference images? So two, like I said, one is just going to be the general feel of what that restaurant's going to look like. So it's not going to be abandoned. I just need to know the layout, uh, perhaps where the light source would be, where they even cook the food, right? All those small details can be included in that photograph. Uh, even this, this is a nice little prop here for the wet floor. Could include that in my final design. Um, and then we've got a reference that is perhaps more abandoned, more in line with what we're looking for. And in this case, I haven't collected it here, but you could also collect reference from uh, existing films or games uh, of concept art uh, of the kind of feel that you're going for, right? So in this case, I've just collected uh, real world references. So the other thing to look out for is let's go back to let's go back up to here let's select this image for example these kind of images are great when we're going into photo bashing right because it's an empty space this photo is essentially our 3d block in we have our foundations in place all we need to do is gather our reference images and paste them in paint the lighting in and maybe even change the perspective of the original image but ultimately our foundation is already there within this one image. Okay, we're already halfway there just with that one. So it's good to try and find images that aren't just for textures, but also uh, as your foundation for your photo bash. Again, we're going to go into photo bash in a, another session, but these are some photo bashing uh, images from those reference images. So I've done four at once. Just to try and get a feel for how I want this scene to look. Do I want it to be fairly open? Do I want it to be dark and dingy? Do I want you to feel like you're enclosed in the scene? Do I want lots of props throughout the scene? Those kind of things you can figure out right in the early stages once you do this photo bash or even just a quick sketch from your reference images. Now, photo bashing is great, but you can see there are some areas here where it doesn't really read well. So do I want a car passing in the background? No. If it's parked, then maybe I would smash the windows and maybe it, it's been burnt out. So that's a detail I could include. It's not too clear what's going on here. Is it smashed? Is it open? I'm not sure. Uh, there's a table here with chairs not being properly painted out. But at this stage, these are just thumbnail photo bashing uh, concepts. So make sure if you're going to develop this even further, that that reads well because ultimately these concepts are going to be taken and given to someone to work on even further. 
perhaps another concept artist or a 3D modeler. And that 3D modeler is going to want to know what's in that scene. So again here, is it really reading well? Not really. So they might actually have to look at your original source to see where you drew your inspiration from. That's why it's again really important that you save these images. You don't just drag them straight into Photoshop and start manipulating them. We need to see the original source. Okay, so you can take one of those concept pieces, and in this case I've taken this one, and I wanted to develop that further. So I've done a 3D block in of these scenes, and the great thing about 3D is I can move and arrange all of these objects within the scene, um, and I can also change the camera angle within that scene. That's really important. In this case, I've rendered two different versions, so one with line art, with a blank background and the other with line arts with um, more lighting information okay so there's a bit more detail there and that's going to help me out when I start to draw and digitally paint into this my lighting's already there great I don't have to try and figure that out when I go into the digital painting so I've chosen um, multiple camera angles and now it's up to me to choose which one I want to go for now I think this one is actually quite interesting because ultimately I wanted to try and keep this scene very open. I think from the original concept art, if I go back to this one, I liked the lighting in this, and you can see a lot of props within the scene that gave me enough visual information for me to start this 3D block in. But at the same time, it feels very closed off, right? The scene just leads your eye right into the center. I would have to include something here of interest, and it just wasn't interesting enough, whereas there's a lot of props here, a lot more dynamic, and I kind of like this post just solid within the scene and I could include some sort of props within this post. And it opens up this seating area for me to include more props here. So I like the idea of having this a bit more open. It's a concept for a game. So the character would need to move around the scene. So this scene just goes from point A to point B. And sure, it kind of looks like you can go down here. But in this case... It looks like I can move around the scene and even go behind these walls. So it's a bit more dynamic, a bit more interesting. So once you've chosen one, that's when you can go into your line arts and create your rough line arts. Let's just go back up to the rough one. So this is the very quick sketch, right? This is the quick sketch on top of the render. And you don't want to spend too long on this. So you don't want to be too precious. If there's a cup and there's a table, very quickly draw the cup on the table, right? This is where you go back to your reference images and you also think about the story in place. Okay, so is there a character within this? So have you gone into here and maybe you're seeing signs of life and you're seeing that other people have lived here, but maybe there's been some sort of uh, fight so you can see evidence of that. Okay, so maybe some spills, some blood. I haven't included blood into this one. Uh, I don't usually like to include gore or, or violence into my work. But again, think about the narrative within the scene. So the environment will also be inspired by the character. So once you've done that quick sketch, this is where you can then do your more refined line art. Can you stick with the initial sketch? For sure, you can. But it's going to make your life much easier when you start to digitally paint into this when you've got a nice strong contour line. And you can see I've made all the lines uh, very wonky. Uh, that's because I'm doing this as more of a stylized piece and less uh, for realism. If I was going for realism, I wouldn't really digitally paint this. I would just use photos because there's a lot of texture information just within that reference image. Uh, so I would get to this stage or let's even just go back to this, this stage here. And then I'd start to photo manipulate into this. And I would do it in a lot more detail than the original photo bash that was here. Okay, so these are more thumbnails for photo bash. To get the idea, to get to the 3D render, then you could start adding those photo textures. Or indeed, just continue to work into this in 3D. Build all your props and texture them that way. Totally up to you. In this case, this is more of an illustration than a concept. Because it takes a long time to digitally paint into this. Okay, so there is the line art. So from there, you would then go into your color block in. And I usually drag an image in that has the lighting that I want in place. And then Gaussian blur the whole image so you can see the blur here. 
so we can't see what the original image was and then start to pick the areas that you want to start painting so start blocking in all of these colors with a hard round brush you can certainly leave some areas that are still gauzy and blurred if you like that effect but other areas that need to be painted because it doesn't really make sense from the original image then you need to paint into it so I usually paint fairly dark and more desaturated and when I paint on top of it that's when I'll add my midtones and my highlights okay so keep it kind of midtone heavy and then you can paint into that later so a very traditional way of painting so from there and this is still unfinished but this is where we start to paint in our details so we just zoom in here start to add some decals some graphics and I'm only using the hard round brush so if anyone's wondering what brush do I use it's just the hard round brush with a lower opacity that's it okay so yes this takes a long time if you want to paint into this, you've got to then think about the lighting in the scene. You've got to think again about the narrative. Are you happy with what you drew originally? So you might need to redraw into it. And this is usually where I put my music on and start to relax and just paint into this because it's going to take a long time. All, right? All of this process, I usually have music off. I want to concentrate. Quick sketch, maybe a bit of music here and there. Digital painting yeah put put the music on because it's going to take quite a long time i would always recommend if you really need to concentrate turn everything else off turn all other distractions off and just spend all your time focusing on this because you are using your brain power right and it does zap that brain power away from you when you're doing this kind of stuff and that's why uh, people burn out right because they're just using that brain power all the time so make sure uh yeah you manage your time effectively and don't get too distracted okay so that's the process uh, let's just go back here so I've done something similar we're gonna do a quick sketch and for this brief this is for a hackers bedroom right so I've got the uh, initial sketch I'm just gonna show you some of the reference images okay so I've just got two different reference images and just so you know I'm using pure ref for my reference so rooms and I've got some interiors for the rooms now initially I started with the the hackers room right so that's the brief so they're the images I'm going to collect in this case I'm looking at all the different props and I'm also looking at the lighting in place as well I mean look at how many props there are within the scene imagine 3d modeling this all those props you'd have to model and UV and texture take a really long time but there's a lot of information here that we can take just all the tape that we could include the wires okay all the machinery we can include all of that VR headsets it's a real great resource if you're trying to imagine all of this from your imagination yeah, good luck you know it's gonna take a long time this is gonna speed up your workflow tenfold okay so collect those reference images and then go from there now when I did the initial sketch so we just go back to the sketch I didn't really have the room in place so I started to do a sketch and then uh, later on thought well actually maybe I want this person to kind of be there for quite a long time right so they're gonna want to have something in place like a kitchen right something where they can maybe cook some food do the dishes and kind of have some of those dishes lying around the place um, in this initial concept as well I had a ladder well that's a nice idea because that allows me to kind of focus more on this area here but then again I was thinking right practically do I want to bring up all of this stuff through a ladder I don't think so I don't think I want all this equipment brought up with the ladder and also is it so small that you couldn't even bring up these tables you know it has to be practical it has to be believable so in this case this concept doesn't really work right so if we go back to the 3d block in so this was the final block in here okay so there's the uh, tonal version 
I've opened this up and made them steps, which also opened up this area. It also meant I needed to make the room just a little bit larger, just to move this to the side. But again, it allowed me to just add more props into the scene and make it feel a bit more believable. So now we could bring up all of these props um, through the stairs. A small detail that again makes it feel a lot more believable. So we're not focusing on the first floor. The first floor was going to be a closed shop. And then second floor coming up here is where they do their hacking. So this is our line art and this is rendered um, within Keyshot, but we're going to be using Arnold Renderer to do the AI tune. But now we've got all of our information from 3D and all we have to do is draw on top. Now it takes a long time, so you can do your initial sketch and then you can go into your render. So let's have a look at this very quick initial sketch. Okay. So we can see I'm not focusing on details and I'm not going to be too precious with how I'm drawing this. You just very quickly get it into the scene. Okay. In the industry, time is money. So you want to get this idea down as quick as possible. So 3D has helped you out an awful lot from your initial sketch up to the 3D model, your sketch on top, and then you can do your more refined sketch on top of that. So let's have a look at that. Let's just load this up in Photoshop. So here we have the more refined line art from the initial sketch. Okay, so this takes quite a long time. Uh, and just get used to spending a long time on your work. Yeah, so you don't need to be as quick as possible. It's not just about doing very quick work. I think speed arts became a big thing quite a couple of years ago. Uh, don't get sucked into that. I have to only do it in half an hour. You know, spend a long time on this because then you'll get really nice results. Okay, so we're going to go through that entire process. So let's start with our reference images. I'm going to do a very quick sketch of what I want this scene to look like. As you can see, I, I started on another sketch based on these rooms. And this is where I started to think, hmm, maybe I want this more as a living area or like a student dorm. And then the idea changed into a much bigger scene. So let's just draw something fairly small. Let's drag the Cintiq out. Okay. And it would also help if it was plugged in. Right, so we're all up and running now. So let's see. Okay, brushes are working. Great. With Wacom, you've always got to test whether it's working, um, it could be slightly buggy. So let's create a new layer. We've got a new layer here, blank start, and let's get some ideas in place. Now, I don't want this to be too complicated for this tutorial because I'm going to show you quite a lot of techniques within Maya. I want to keep this fairly short as well. So let's just have a look at some of our reference images. Now, I don't just want a square room. I want at least some sort of change. So you can just start by just thinking about the layouts, right? So you could just draw a couple of squares. Okay, so something like this, and I've got varying kind of camera angles here. I think, right, that's my room, essentially. That's my floor plan. How do I expand from that? So maybe I just add a bit more detail here. Maybe this actually kind of curves around and it comes out here. And then that's what that room looks like. Okay, it's going to be fairly flat there. Let's redo that. And then maybe this one is kind of similar, maybe more of a kind of T shape. Okay, so if we drew into those, we could just move all of these points up. And essentially, that is my room. So they're my walls. And we're drawing through this scene. Okay. Okay, so that could be a good way to get started before you get bogged down on doing one thing. Now, I quite like just this one here. So I think I might just explore that a bit further. 
So let's delete these. And uh, let's just make sure my reference images aren't getting in the way. Okay. I'm just going to use the lasso tool here. Select what I don't want. And then let's expand on this idea. Again, I'm not going to take too long on this. So we want to get into 3D and start blocking this in. This is just so that I can get at least an idea down on the page. All right, so let's just draw the rest of this block. Like this, got the rest of the wall. And there we go. So there's our block ins. So we're going to have something in the corner here. And this might be where we include maybe the desk. Although the desk is in the corner, maybe we want to open this up just a little bit more. And there could even be some windows here. Yeah, let in some natural light. So maybe there's some windows here. There's going to be a table here. This is where the desk is. Okay, maybe there's a shelf here. Yeah, and just look look how quick I'm doing it. Yeah, I'm not being too precious. It's kind of a plump hot here. Okay, maybe there's a... Uh, used to do sports. It's got a little trophy. Uh, little books. Kind of software manuals. Boxes for software. Yeah, little trinkets. And then we've got the monitors. So maybe it's a, a dual monitor. All right, it's connected to the table. This table is quite high, so I might just drop this down. Something like that. And then on here, normal stuff is going to be the keyboard, it's going to be the mouse. Maybe there's um, a Wacom Intuos or a, a tablet. Uh, maybe there's some CD cases here. And again, this is where you go back to your reference. So we've got headphones hanging over the side. Maybe we include the headphones. Um, there's wires kind of dangling down. So let's kind of add wires. Like an audio device in the back. Maybe there's some speakers here. Okay, that's just one desk. So maybe there's another desk here that kind of loops around. I'm not worried again at this stage at proportions or anything like that. And then maybe these ones are kind of really old computers. Yeah, he's got quite a few of them. So we've got some of that reference here. Let's have a look. Yes, yeah, so we've got a, a mix of the old and the new. There may be a, a printer here. And you might want to make some notes so you can kind of move out from here and say, well, this is a printer, you know, old screen. You know, if you need to make notes, then, then make those notes. Um, again, there could be some sort of wall bracket here. This way you can include something else. Again, maybe more some more plants. Um, we're going to have the towers, maybe some towers on the ground. There's going to be a tower here. Uh, maybe there's just a set of drawers here. Going to be kind of posters on the wall. Maybe some cobwebs. It's kind of damp, so a lot of this. All these kind of stains. Let's have a look. What else have we got? So we could have maybe um, like a bookcase here. Okay, we'll have another set of drawers. We'll have maybe some more towers on here, maybe some books that kind of slanted, fallen over. Um, let's do a clock. 
Now I liked in the original idea that it had multiple clocks within the scene. So if he's a hacker, uh, then he's going to want to have the time that is of uh, maybe a different time zone or something very specific if he was hacking like a bank and their clock just had a slight time change maybe it was just a minute fast then he could show that in the clock and try and time it perfectly I thought that was a pretty cool idea so yeah again maybe some more posters maybe there's some more stuff on top of the bookcase so we've got like a little light here uh, maybe we can include some lamps so there could be a lamp here okay add some light into the scene and some more books on top and just you know old boxes just boxes filled with stuff cardboard boxes everywhere <clears throat> and inside of them maybe kind of old keyboards and maybe some clothes so here we've got this little mini fridge maybe the mini fridge is just here and maybe this is where the small little kitchen is Just thought we need some need some chairs, don't we? Plates stacking up. I like these rolls here. You can see I'm just going straight back to my reference. What do I want to include? Okay, let's include that there. Uh, I've got a little server there. That's quite interesting. Uh, maybe some more computers. I would say let's actually just open this up. So the door is going to be around about here. Right, so we'll only just cut through this. So we won't see the whole door. But we'll give at least an indication of where that door could be. Or we could even open the door up in case the door comes out like that. So let's give an indication to where the door is. And then maybe this is where we just... Again, you could spend a bit more time on this, but I'm just going to add maybe some boxes. And then maybe there's a, a rug in the center. And then we can see the floorboards here. Okay, that is our design. You can continue continue to add little posters and maybe there's a board here and that board shows something in place there you can see actually that gets cut off so we wouldn't see that unless we change the camera angle that's going to be the beauty of 3d I should be able to just see behind this wall whilst also seeing what's on this wall okay right so let's take this design and there's a lot of props there there's a lot to model uh, I may need to skip through some of this uh, but let's see uh, at least how we can get up and running, create those walls, and I'll show you how to make some of these props, and then we'll go into the line art, and then we'll see that end result. Okay, so let's jump into Maya. Okay, so now that we're in Maya, I'm just going to show you some of the settings that we'll need to change first before we start modeling. So by default, Maya workspace is going to be set up as centimeters. And I need to set this to foot, right? So this grid will be set to foot and it will make our lives much easier. I've also got my reference image here on pure ref just so I can go through. If I need to go back to any of my reference images, I can have a look at them. If I want to look at my original sketch, then I could go into that one as well. Okay. It's a great thing pure ref. It will stay on top 
of your menu. Let's just shrink it down so it's not going to cut into anything. But yep, we can use that directly as our reference um, for this demo. Okay, so let's change those settings. Now we've got a series of settings up here, file, edit, create, select, modify. It can, can become quite overwhelming when, oh, well, where is it? It's in mesh tools and it's in edit mesh. There's only a couple of tools that we'll be using. So don't worry about all of these. And you can make an awful lot just with a couple of settings. So we'll go over some of those settings today. So to change the uh, size of our layout, we need to go to Windows, Settings, slash Preferences, and then Preferences, and select Settings again. And here where it says Lineal under the working units, it's set to centimeter, we need to change this to foot. Okay, we can see that this is now enlarged. Make sure you hit save. And now when you zoom out, so I'm just holding alt and then hold right click. We can move this from left to right to zoom out. Or you can use the middle mouse button to zoom out. Okay, I'm just scrolling that. And then alt and hold middle mouse to pan along the axes. And then hold alt and hold left click to move around this grid. Okay. So just get used to those uh, mouse shortcuts. If you've already used Maya, then it's going to be easy for you. But I want to cover the basics in case you haven't used it. Okay. So now this is set to foot. And the great thing about that is it's much easier to measure something. So if I add a cube, for example, then that cube is going to be one foot by one foot by one foot. So if I move this, if I press space bar on the keyboard, then I'm going to have multiple views. So I've just pressed space bar to gather all these multiple views. We've got our perspective, we've got our side, our front view, and our top view. Now get used to just right clicking on these. Okay, you can see it's now on our front view. If I right click on this one, it's on our top view. And the reason why we right click is it doesn't deselect what we've got within our scene. So for example, if I select a face here, and then if I left click on this top menu here, see it deselects, and now it's saying, oh, you wanted to select the top, right? So make sure that you right click on these menus, and then when you press space bar, and let's zoom out on this box, it's still gonna be selected from our original one. So again, space bar just brings up all of our menus, get used to just right clicking on these so that you don't interfere with any of these menus. So all I'm doing is I'm right clicking on it, pressing spacebar to enlarge, and then scrolling out with that middle mouse button. Or you can hold alt, hold right click, and zoom in and out. Okay, just a couple of options there. So let's go back to our perspective view. And we can see that it's snapped within the center. We can see it's snapped along the center line here. So each box, I'm just gonna make this smaller so we can't see. Each box is a foot. So if we wanted our box to be seven foot, then all we'd need to do is count these boxes. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so we'll know if we need to make it an extra foot, then we just drag this out to the extra box. So let's go back to our perspective view. And I'm just going to delete this box. So you can see if I hold right click, and if I hover around, so I'm holding right click and then just moving the mouse around, we have the edge, the vertex, the face, and the object mode. We have a, other options as well, but I don't want you to worry about them just now. So edge, if I let go, you can see I can now select the edge of this cube. If I hold right click, go to vertex, I can select the vertex. And if I hold right click and go to face, then I can select each face. If I want to select more, then I can hold shift, select another face, and now they are selected. If you already know all this, you can skip ahead. I don't know what timestamp it is yet because I'm doing this live. Um, but yeah, by all means, skip ahead. I just want to show you some of the basic controls within Maya. So if we wanted to delete this, we could go up to object mode, select our object, and then just hit delete, okay? 
to add the cube in poly modeling, I can just select this cube icon. And now we've got our cube. Okay, so let's change the size of this cube. So an average ceiling height is an well, an old building is eight foot. More modern buildings now are going for nine foot. But let's keep it at eight for now. Let's say it's uh, more of an older building. And here, once we've selected our cube, the attribute editor should pop up. You may be in another menu. It might be in modeling toolkit, might be in channel box. Make sure you're in the attribute editor. If you're in a slightly different layout, I'm currently using 2019. Um, I've always used 19 because it just works and I like it. <laughs> uh, but if you've got a later one, you might need to change the layout. I've got this set to Maya Classic. Modeling standard will um, be very similar, but Maya Classic for now. So your menus might be on the top, but just note that we need to be in the attribute editor. So here we can select our polycube one, and that's our cube within the scene. And we can see it says width one, height one, depth one. So if we wanted that height to be at eight foot, then I can highlight this, select eight, press enter, and now we've got an eight foot cube. Now there are ways of snapping this to the grid. Um, it might be slightly complicated. I can show you it just to make sure that you know it, but you can also go back into these side views and you could just move this up. Right, so I'm on the move tool and you can just move this green arrow and move this up. Okay. To move that axis, so the axis is directly in the center, we can press insert on the keyboard. If I just go back to my modeling toolkit here, we can see we've now turned on edit pivot. If I hold C on the keyboard, we can see it's now selected this. So it's toggled this magnifying glass on, which is the curve. I can hold left click and drag until it's straight along the axis. So it's heading up. We might need to just change our camera angle slightly. I just press Control Z to undo. So again, hold uh, C. Be a little bit fiddly. And there we go. And then we can press insert again. Hold X and now it will just snap onto the grid. Okay, because we've shown where that endpoint is. Just note that any modification I make, so let's say I move this face, that pivot point will still be in the center. Okay, if you ever need to change your pivot point right back into the center, then you can go to modify and center pivot. For now, I don't want you to worry about that because we can just move this to the grid. We don't need this to be extremely precise. This is just for the blocking. So I just want to go back to the beginning. You can just keep what you've got, but I just want to go back just in case you get lost. All we did was we selected our cube. We went to attribute editor and we've changed that height from one to eight. Okay. Now when we select the cube, we can go to the move tool move this up and let's just move it on top of the grid. Okay, that's fine. So now we've got it set to a height of eight. Let's have a look at the depth. And I'm just going to test this first. So let's just go back to our reference image and let's see how big we want this wall. Okay, so that was our depth. Let's just bring that back to one and let's change the width. So let's just have a look at this back wall here and let's see what it looks like at 18 foot. That looks pretty good to me. I think our scene is, is fairly large. Um, we might need to just bring this up to 20. And again, this is going to be in, in accordance to the drawing that you do. But this is how you would do it in a more precise way. Um, you can literally just select the vertices and use the move tool and move it to anywhere you want. The great thing about having it set to foot is, again, these are going to be in 20 little cubes. And that's our 20 foot. Okay. Now that's 20. That's fine. So we need to have this one longer 
then this front wall but we won't see this front wall we just at least need the dimension for it so let's just create a, another cube and let's set this to something like a depth of 5 okay let's see what that looks like might need to be a bit longer maybe 8 and then the height again is set to 8 okay so we could do 8 foot by 8 foot I'm just bringing it up to our grid so it needs to be a little bit lower and we can just use our move tools you can press W on the keyboard to move and get into the habit of not selecting these squares in the center use these axes okay so use these arrows to move along the axes okay so I'm just making this intersect into that other wall just a little bit okay in fact we might need to just make it flush to the wall and now that's the precise way okay essentially if you want to create a very precise room you can create a new cube and you can change your um, um, your sizes here okay now just for expediency because we're kind of just eyeballing the scene I'm going to just do this manually so if I press control D so this is on object mode again hold right click object mode control D on the keyboard will duplicate and we can select our rotate tool and if you just rotate along this axis here so this will rotate it around it will rotate freely but we want it to snap along the axes and if you hold J on the keyboard then we can see it starts to snap okay brilliant so now we can use that move tool again move this to the side move this in place but it's too long now right okay so let's go into our face mode so hold right click go into face select this face and now move this back okay if this interferes with our scene too much because it's a cut through we can always just move this wall down and just give an indication of where that wall is for now this might be okay so let's duplicate this wall because it's on the same axis so control D so we've already got that size in place let's move this to the side and there we go there's our next wall now if you want to see the edges just so it doesn't look like a gray block right here we can select the edge detection okay so it's going to select the edge and now we can see where our walls are and let's duplicate this back wall so control D move this to here and it needs to be flush along this wall so we know that that means that this wall here again hold right click select face this end wall needs to be moved back whoop make sure nothing else is selected if you've selected something else you can either just select away or you can hold control left click on that selection and it will deselect so holding shift will select multiple but holding control will deselect okay so let's just move this to the side like so and now we have our wall so I'm just going to do it so it's full size first and then we can start to modify it so control D rotate hold J to snap and rotate along the axes okay nice and easy so move tool again move tool here or W on the keyboard I'm going to move this to the side and move this back okay brilliant so there is our foundation for our wall but we can't see inside of the wall we could do a different render we could show a high view like this but the point is we want to see as much detail as possible so all the detail that we drew here we wouldn't see it if we have these walls so we do something called a cut through so let's decide which walls we're going to remove so let's decide on this wall outside wall and this wall and we might need to do something about this wall let's have a look so I'm going to select this outside wall hold shift select this one okay it selects multiple but we need to move all these points at once so let's just mesh and combine these so now our mesh is combined let's hold right click 
go to vertex and I'm going to left click and drag only the top ones. Okay, and you can see it's now selected all of those vertices. If I went into face mode and selected all the top, it would also select all of the side. So that's why we go into vertex. So all we select are the top vertices. If I move this down, now we've got this cut through and we can see through our scene. Okay, and I think that looks pretty good. I don't think we need to modify this wall. We might just lose a bit of detail. So we could just do maybe a slightly higher angle, change the camera perspective and just see what's behind that wall. Brilliant, okay. If you want to add any kind of external features that you needed to show, so maybe there was a window or maybe you wanted to show some of the external brickwork, then you could select this object, for example, and we can go to our modeling toolkit, go to multi-cut and then multi-cut somewhere. So you can see it's trying to attach itself to one of these edges or to the vertex. If you hold control and just move the mouse, and we can see where it wants to snap. So let's maybe just snap it uh, around about here. Go back into our move tool. It's really important that you go back to one of your move tools or scale tools, otherwise it will still be selected here. We can now be in face mode, hold right click, go to face. And we can extrude. So in our modeling toolkit, we can press extrude. Or you can press Control E on the keyboard. Okay, Control E. And now we can just move this arrow up. And that can give us just enough detail for us to add some exterior details. Okay, that's optional, but that's how I would do it. Okay, so we want to show some of the brickwork, we can show it there. Brilliant. So let's continue from here. We need to add our foundation. We need to add our base. You could do this with a flat plane. So if you just select flat plane, then it will be snapped, snapped to the floor. And then as I zoom in, there's our plane. Or you can select a cube and then make it the right size. I think a plane for now will be okay. Okay, so let's go back and select that. So there's our flat plane, we're in scale. And this time we're gonna scale right through the center here. Okay, so we can scale this out. And we've got a lot of um, edges here. So let's go into attribute. Let's go into polyplane. We can see our subdivisions are set to 10. We don't need all those subdivisions. So we could just bring all that down to one. And then if you need to customize this side, so there's a slight overhang. Now we won't see it, so it's not really that important. But you could go into edge, select your edge, go back into your move tool and just move this. Okay, same here, you could select this edge and move it in. Same for this one. Now actually we need that to be longer. So that cuts through there. If you're really picky, you could go to the... Um, Multi-cut tool, you could multi-cut through here and delete that, but again, we're not going to see it in our final render. And even if you do see a bit of this, then you can always just not draw it, right? So when we go into our Photoshop version, just erase it, okay? So not that important. Brilliant, so we have our foundation, excellent. So I'm just gonna show you uh, how to make a couple of these props, there's an awful lot within this scene. So let's do something that is a little bit more complicated. So let's do the uh, bookcase. I'm gonna show you how to cut through in the window. I'll show you the desk and also maybe one of these boxes, okay? And then I'll skip forward and then I'll show you the uh, final result. So let's have a look. Let's just look at maybe cutting through as a window. Let's try that. So let's select a cube and that will snap into the center. And this cube is essentially going to be our window. So we're going to model the cube or at least just get the dimensions for it. So I'm just using the scale tool. Okay, and if that's the size of the window I want, we need to make sure it has a thickness that's greater than the wall that we're gonna cut through. So it needs to go from one side to the other. And this cube is gonna cut directly through our wall. 
So let's place the window where we want it. Maybe make it just a little bit larger. Something like that. Okay, maybe a little bit higher. Just looking at my own window just to see for scale. Okay, and let's duplicate it. So control D, move this over. And then that's where our next window will be. And we're going to use a tool called the Boolean tool. And to Boolean, it will essentially select our objects that we want to cut through and then our object that's going to cut through it. Almost like a cookie cutter, right? So if we select our back wall, we can hold shift, select on this cube, select on that cube. So I'm in object mode. Again, holding right click. I'm in object mode. Okay. Do it again. Hold the back wall. Hold shift. Select this cube, select this cube, and then on the modeling toolkit, we can select Boolean. Okay, so modeling toolkit, Boolean. And by default, it will be set to Union, and this is how you can combine objects together. It doesn't do a very nice job of it, but that's how you can combine them. If we would need to change this so it cuts through, we can select Union, and then we can select Difference. Okay, and that's going to cut through our wall. Again, the topology isn't very clean. We need to clean this up. We need to delete these edges. We need to connect these points together, make them loop around the walls so that they connect here. But for our block in, this isn't really um, that important. Okay, so let's continue. So we've created our Boolean. Now let's have a look at the bookcase. So what technique would I use there? So let's select our cube. Move this up. Select face, move this to the side. And I'm just getting the depth of this bookcase. So I'm just going into face mode and I'm just moving each face. Looks like the depth is, yeah. Bit too much. Let's move this back. Let's make it fairly large. Okay, just move this towards the wall. Oh, looks at some point I moved an edge. So let's move this edge back. Okay. Brilliant. Now for scale, we can also include a character so we can import one in. So let's go into one of my other folders. So you've all got access to either the shed or the, um, the table within that folder. And I've included this human scale, right? So if I just drag and drop this in then I've got those characters in there for scale, and these characters are set to uh, five foot nine. So you can move your character in place and get an idea of where, or at least how big this bookcase needs to be. So this bookcase is kind of small. So let's go back into our face and maybe just bring this up and maybe just bring this bookcase out just a little bit. Okay, so we can use those characters for scale. And then when you don't want them, we could just move these out to the side, okay? So let's start editing our bookcase. I'm going to select the face. And I'm also going to create some loops. So we can go to connect. And we can connect a segment. So let's select a segment of perhaps six. And let's actually go into edge mode. Again, change that segment to six and see what this looks like. Okay, that looks pretty good. So I've just left clicked on this side edge. And when you're happy with it, you can press enter. Let me just do that again. We're in object mode. I'm going to right click, go to edge, select an edge, select connect, and change the segments to six. That may not be six. It depends on how many different segments you want. So you could change it to four if you wanted to. And in fact, let's just keep it at four just to see what that looks like. You can keep it at six. It's going to do the same thing. So now I'm going to select the front faces. So holding shift, face, 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 face. Another shortcut 
for those of you that want to speed through this you can hold tab left click and drag and then you can select multiple of so there's two different ways be more manual by holding shift or you can hold tab and just left click and drag okay two different ways so now we need to have an extrusion but we also need some depth just in between here for our shelves so I'm going to press uh, extrude again here or control E on the keyboard and I'm going to create an offset but if I create an offset you'll see it starts to move all of them in at once so we don't want that so we need to keep all of these faces off so it says keep faces together turn that off now when I create my offset it offsets all of them okay we need another extrusion because we want to extrude this back so we can press extrude again or again control E on the keyboard and then move this arrow back or you can play around with the thickness slider so I'm just left clicking and dragging on this thickness and we can move it back so you don't want it to go through the wall but we want it to just sit away from it okay back into object mode there we go we got our bookcase now for the table very similar process just a cube move it in place and you can even go to the scale tools if you want to scale it out this way you don't need to be in face mode okay so there's our table might need to bring our character up to get the height of that table so it's just above the knee in between the thigh now that's right again that's why we add these characters so that we know okay maybe just a little bit more depth and then for the legs it's just going to be a cylinder okay so we can move this cylinder in scale it down and scale it up so scaling in the center will scale it uniformly up and down don't scale with these because that will flatten your cylinder only just scale up or scale in the center Okay, so that's my table leg. I'm just going to move that in place. Now, if it's too long because we scaled it and we didn't move an edge, you can hold right click, go to vertex, select the bottom and then move these up. So just get used to that. Get used to going between the vertex and the face just to make these changes. So same for this vertex. You might need to bring it up into the table. Okay, back into object mode, move it in place. Now if you're ever stuck, let's say you can't really see what's going on here and you want to just focus in on that one model. If you press control 1 on the keyboard, then it will just isolate that model and we can now begin modeling on this. If I move this up, press control 1, now we can see it in the scene. Okay, so that's really handy, especially when you've got lots of props in the scene and you just want to focus in on one thing, press control 1. Just note that you need to be in object mode. Otherwise, if I just select some faces and press Control 1, it will just isolate those faces, right? So be in object mode. Oop, make sure nothing else is selected. There we go. Control 1. And it will isolate. So let's duplicate this. Control D to duplicate. And let's move this across. Just get used to those shortcuts. And now we can select both of these, so shift click both, control D to duplicate, move it across. Okay, and I might just add a bit more thickness to this table, so I'm just going to move this face down just a little bit. There we go. And there is our table. Now everything else is just essentially a block. So the monitors, they're just blocks. It's just a cube. We can move the face out, push this back. If it goes black, then it's inverted. Make sure they are always gray. So front facing. Okay, and that's our monitor. Yeah, really simple. Control D, duplicate over, and just keep going. If I was to create a bin, for example, Let's just control one to isolate. 
then I could select my vertex. I could select all of those. I could select scale. If I scale in the center, it starts to bring it inwards. If I then want to extrude this, then I could select the face. Again, you could hold shift and select each individual one. Or you can hold tab, left click and drag and select multiple. So I can press control and E to extrude but I want a thickness first, so I'm going to set an offset and then control E and extrude down. So we can see that we made that adjustment there, so it's a lot thinner. Bring it down to where you want it. Press R for scale and scale inwards. Okay, with that center. Get used to using the center ones if you want to scale everything at once. Okay, and there's our bin. We can press Control-1 again, bring it back into the scene. We can scale the whole object down. And then just move it in place. So for the boxes, it's the same process. Here's our box. Let's make it a little bit longer. Select the face in the center. Control E or extrude here to extrude. Create an offset. So I'm just left clicking and dragging here. Another extrusion here. Or we'll again, Control E and just bring this down. Okay, and there is our box. Now, if you wanted a bit more detail, let's say you wanted the, the lid, you could go to Multicut, hold Control. You could create a loop just at the top. You could go to face mode, select the top face and extrude it and just move this out and down. OK, so that could be a way of just creating a bit more of a variation just so you don't have to model all of this yourself. Right. So I'm just extruding, moving these out. OK, something like that. So same for this one, control E, extrude, and just pull it down. Just know that as you're pulling it down, it will stretch. So top ones here, control E, move it out, move it down. Again, that's optional, but saves you from drawing it, right? So now we can just scale this <clears throat> and then move it where we want it. So we don't want it just perfectly lined up with the axes, right? We want to maybe use the rotate tool, rotate it here. We can then duplicate this, control D and move the box somewhere else, but we don't want it to be in the same angle. So we could rotate it like this. Yeah, and then maybe this top lid is further down. So I'm just using that vertex and I can just move it. Okay, make all those subtle changes within 3D. So for the drawers, it's the same technique. Select a box, move this to the side. Ooh, make sure we've got the box selected in face mode. The size of my drawer, that looks pretty good. Move this further back. make it a little bit bigger so I'm just going to scale into the center move it up so for the draw in this case I'm just going to use a multi-cut multi-cut through the center select my face shift click both same technique as the bookcase control E to extrude or extrude here create an offset but it's offsetting the whole thing so we need to keep faces off okay and then I'll extrude but this time I'll extrude outwards. So I'm going to add that thickness. And there we go. There's my draw. In 3D, you could add the handles and you can do all that. And that's perfectly fine. But I know I could just draw it in in Photoshop. So all those kind of details don't really matter. Excellent. As for the posters, I would just duplicate and reuse everything that I've already got in place. So I can control D this, move this here. Maybe there's a poster here. 
can go into vertex mode, select the bottom, move them down, and I now have my poster. Yeah, so just reuse what you've already got there. You don't have to make a new object for everything. So it's a little bit difficult to select this. There we go. Again, just get used to using the vertex, moving it along the axes. The shelves, I can just duplicate this, move this up. Go to face, make it thinner, go to vertex, move it down. So just get used to, to this because this is going to be the foundation of you modeling pretty much everything, right? So there's our shelf. Back into object mode, control D, duplicate up. There's our second shelf. Same for the books. I could just duplicate this one over here. They're going to be thinner, so I could use the scale tool. I could scale outwards, then make it smaller. So you could just control D these, control D to duplicate. You might want to rotate it just so that there's a subtle difference here, just so it doesn't look like a copy and paste. And then go back to this one, control D, yeah, so on and so forth. As for the sync, I'll do this as the last one before we go into the Arnold renderer and render this as a tune shader. So select face, move this out. The sink has an extrusion right through the center, so we can use that multi-cut. Control will loop, so round about here and there. Now we need to know the width of the sink, so it's about here and about there. And again, I'm just kind of guessing where this would be. I can go into face mode, back into move, extrude, and extrude it down. Okay, now most sinks come inward slightly, so I could use scale and just scale inwards a little, just so it's not totally straight. And there we go, there's my sink. The chair, I would probably use a cube again. And I'll make this my last model. Select face, move this down. And then I could add a connection. So I could go to edge, select an edge, go to connect. And I'm going to set this to, yeah, let's keep it at four. I think that looks pretty good. Hit enter when you're done. And in this case, I'm going to just select these outside vertexes and just bring them in slightly. Okay, so these ones, I'm shift clicking. Bring it in. And essentially, that is my chair. I could go into face and just select all these faces so it loops all the way around. And then just move the chair down slightly. Okay, and that is my chair. If your camera is locked to something else and you're finding it difficult to move around, press F on the keyboard and it will center to that object. So if I want to center my camera here, press F, center it to the box, press F, right? Just get used to that as well. If you want it to be a little bit sharper, you can always select a bevel and that will just bevel the edge uh, for this chair. So if you don't want a hard edge, you can bevel it. And then let's just duplicate this, rotate it. And we'll make that, yeah, 
There we go. And the rest are just going to be cylinders, right? So the cylinder underneath. Scale down. We can go to vertex, select all the top, so the bottom ones and move this down. Just going to shift click all of these, move them up, move it towards the table. It's going to give me a good indication of where this should be. So somewhere around about there. And if you want to isolate, again, select the object, control one will isolate. And now I can start to just model on this. So I could go to face. I can select all of these faces. So I can hold tab, left click, move all of them around. I could press control E to extrude or extrude here. And I could just move this down. I could go to scale, scale them out, control E again, extrude down, control E. So just get used to extruding. If you want to make a new change, control E again, right? That just makes a bit more of a variation. Now for the legs. You could make the legs separately. For now, I'm just going to shift click some of these edges here. I'm not going to be too precious with the spacing. Maybe something like that. Okay, maybe another one here. That will do. And then Control E to extrude, and I'll just add a thickness here. There we go. So let's just go back into face. Use the scale tool and just scale these in. Right, won't be perfect, but at least good enough for our blocking. So I'm just selecting each face, scaling in the center, and moving it down. This is optional. I just want to show you some of the techniques that, that I may use. Okay, so now I'm just going to select all of these faces. Use the move tool and just move it down. Okay, control one again. And then I'll select the top vertex and just move it down. So that's it. That is our chair. Okay, and if you wanted something up there, then you could maybe just duplicate this and just delete everything else or just make a new object. I don't want to overcomplicate this because I'm just kind of doing this free thought. I'm not really spending too much time on this. So I could just maybe just delete some of these edges. Okay. And then when you select edge, you can actually uh, fill these in. So if we go to, where are we? Even though I'm getting lost. Uh, mesh and fill hole. Then you can just fill that area. So mesh, fill hole, and do it that way. Again, that's optional. I just want to show you what I may do. Okay, again, that's good enough just for us to start drawing into this. So that is the 3D modeling stage. They're the same techniques throughout. Um, using the multi-cut tool, if you hold control, it will loop around. Using the face and the vertex to move this object. And then, of course, the moving tools, rotates, and the scale tools. That's essentially it. You can import one of these characters so that you can get a better sense for the scale. And yeah, just keep going, keep modeling, and then you'll create your final scene. And of course, the other one was the Boolean. That's going to help you to cut through these forms. Excellent. So I'm going to finalize this now by rendering it. So just in case uh, I haven't selected everything, I'm actually just going to merge all of these objects together for now. Anything that you merge, you can separate. So if you go to mesh and combine, you'll see that everything is now one object. But if you select it and go back to mesh and separate, then it will go back to your separate object. So you can go back. So for now, I'm just going to combine it, mesh, combine, just so I make sure that everything just has one material. And that one material is going to be our Arnold AI Tune shader. 
So first thing we need to do is select the AI Toon shader. So hold right click, go down to assign new material, select Arnold, and then select the AI Toon. Okay, so I'm just gonna do that again. Hold right click, assign new material, Arnold, and it's in AI Toon, okay. So that should bring up the attribute editor. We can see we've made a bunch of changes here. So you may need to scroll across. So all of the edits that we've done are saving as, as a history here. To make it much easier, we can hold right click and we can go to material attributes and it will just snap straight to our material. Or if you select on your object, you can go to edit, delete by type, delete history, and now it will delete all of that history and we'll just have our object and our AI tune, okay? It's good to get into the habit of saving your work and then deleting that history um, because after a while, you've got a lot of things in the scene, it can slow down Maya um, and it can crash it. So make sure you're deleting your history if you're happy with the shape that you've got, okay? So delete that history, we're on AI tune and we'll change some of these settings but the first thing we need to do is just do a test render, right? So let's have a look at that test. Now I've currently got an icon just over my Maya, so I might need to just shrink my Maya down slightly just so we can see this. Um, okay, so Arnold up here. If we go to open Arnold render view and press play, then it will do nothing. Why is that? We've got an Arnold renderer, we've got an Arnold texture. Why isn't it rendering? That's because there's no light in the scene. So we need to go to Arnold, lights, and Skydome light. There are other lights that you can use. You can use a mesh light. That's where you attach a light to an object. You can use something like a physical sky or an area light. But for now, we're going to use a Skydome light, and it's the quickest way to just add lights throughout the entire scene. So it will light our entire object. Here there's a little clapperboard here. And if you select that clapperboard with the cog, then we can go into our settings here and make sure that that renderer using is set to Arnold Renderer. Okay, so make sure it's not on Maya software or hard, uh, hardware. Make sure it is on Arnold Renderer. Now on the image format, we can change this to JPEG or you can change it to PNG, it's totally up to you, but we'll keep it as JPEG. We'll scroll down and here is the preset for our render. Now I recommend that you keep it fairly low, at least in the early stages, so it's not taking too long to render. So make sure it's working first and then you can bump up that resolution. So we'll do that shortly, but that's where it is. And the next thing we need to do so that we can see the uh, contour line is change a setting here within the Arnold renderer. Now I'm just going to close this down and I want to show you what it looks like just within the Arnold render view. So now that we've got the light within the scene, we can see that it has lit our scene. We've got our object in place and it will render based on the camera that's in the viewport. So if I zoom in here, we'll see that it zooms in on our render as well. Okay. So we've got a nice render, that's great. We can file save that if you're happy. So file save image, but we want that contour line. So how do we change that? Let's stop this, close this down, back into that clapperboard. And this is where we need to be. Arnold renderer, go to filter and change this Gaussian. So it's a Gaussian blur, it'll make a smoother edge. We need to change it to contour. So scroll down and select contour. So now when we close this down, go to Arnold and open Arnold render view and press play, it will have a black line around the entire object, which is great. It has created that contour line, but it hasn't actually noticed any of the objects that are within the scene. It's only on the outside. So we change that by selecting our model. It's going to close the render down. Go back into our AI tune. So AI tune one. If you created multiple textures, it may be a different number. But in the attribute editor, AI tune, we need to change some of these settings. So the first setting we need to change is the base. I'm going to open the render view. You don't need to do this. But 
if you press play, then we can see what that looks like. And again, this is why I set this low just so it doesn't take too long. But the base is essentially our base material here. So all this lighting information is in the base. If I bring this slider all the way down, then it will remove all of that lighting. And this is a real quick way of creating silhouettes as well. So if you've got a 3D model in the scene, you can add an AI tune shader, remove the base, and you can create a silhouette. So you could use that as your template within Photoshop. Okay. Now we don't want that. So we need to scroll down, go to emission and turn the weight up. And now we'll have a white background and we'll have that contour line. Okay. Which again, great. We're getting there but we've still only got that outside edge so let's go up to our angle threshold so let's bring this down to something like 18 so from 180 to 18 and there we go now we're starting to see our objects rendered and because this is rendering live i can just change my camera angle and get a better sense of what kind of angle i want Okay, so maybe something like this so I can see behind that wall. Make sure nothing is clipping away from the scene. And if you've got any kind of bevels, then you can turn off ID difference and it will do a slightly better job at rendering those. If you don't like the thickness here in the width scaling, you can change this. Let's do something like a 0.8. Okay, and that will just make the width just slightly smaller. I think I quite like that at 0 0.8. And that is essentially it. I'm just going to move the camera across. And I'm going to change the render settings. I'm going to stop this. I also don't want that character in the scene. So I'm going to go back into mesh and separate. And just move this character away. Okay, we don't want to see any of that. And I'm going to go back into the uh, Arnold renderer, so the little clapperboard. And I'm going to go back into common, select the preset, so scroll down. I'm going to change this to HD 1080. And you can also go into the Arnold renderer and just double all of these digits here. So from 2 to 4. Okay, even the camera, you can do that at 6. Close that down press play and it may take a while it might take five minutes um, let's see whether it renders there we go so we can see it's a lot smoother now and the edges will get darker as it starts to render there we go now some edges may be lost and that's based on the angle of that edge you can always just draw that in. Remember, we're not using this as our 3D render to go into a game engine. We're using this as our base that we don't have to worry about all the, the perspective and worrying about placing objects within a scene and drawing everything from scratch. We just need to have this 3D block in as our base so that we can start to draw directly on top of this. Okay, so this is just our base for us to begin drawing. Okay. So once that's rendered and you're happy with the scene, again, this is going to take quite a while, we're on 33%. This will disappear. Once it gets to 100, it will disappear. You can go to File, Save Image, and because we changed that to JPEG, it will allow us to save this as a JPEG format. Okay, so name it, save it, and then that will be our final render. From there, that's when we would then put this back into Photoshop and we draw all of those extra objects that we want in the scene. So all the th of the things that we didn't render, then we can draw that in afterwards. And that's where we can have great fun because we can add a lot of props into the scene and really start to make it feel like a lived in believable scene. From that quick sketch, that's when we can start to refine it and take a long time drawing into this that we can start to paint into it again this is less of a concept and this is more for the illustration right in this stage the 3d block in drawing on top then you might use a different technique you might use something like a photo bash 
Yeah, so you can get a lot of texture detail that way. Or you might just stick with the color block in and end there. If you want a lot of detail, then you'll need to digitally paint into it. Okay, I'm going to leave it there. And then we're going to move into the next session where we draw on top of this. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next session. Okay, take care everyone. Goodbye.